In this video, we are loading up the 300L Rally, as you can see, and I'm going on my first moto camping trip since my wreck. Oh, I've been itching for this so much. As you see, I got the Rally really loaded down here. I got about a three hour ride to the campsite. We camping tonight, and then tomorrow we're going on our ride. So don't worry, I won't bore you with the three hours on the highway, but throughout this ride, I wanna talk about why I really think the 300L Rally is almost the perfect bike. So hopefully you guys can hear me as it is incredibly, incredibly dusty out here right now. And that dang exhaust is so loud. Oh my gosh, it's annoying. And other side note, sorry about my cluster you're seeing here. That might be all that you can see is my carpy ride. And then I got my little deflector, which is really nice again for longer road trips. So I'm not getting beat up. I can pull up my visor. And again, I'm not getting beat up by the wind. It's just something nice for longer trips. Maybe I need to get a uh, one of those mounts that mount on the top of my helmet so you guys can kind of see over. That, that'd be pretty cool. I'm going to look into that. I don't know how I'd act, you know, be kind of weird on the top of my head. Uh, but anyway, so apologize that you're probably just seeing a whole lot of this. But again, as far as a 300 l rally on the road, ah, oh man, just right now, again, being on this little bit, a few things that stand out to me. Number one being more gas the bigger fuel tank you know i'm taking avoid highway routes so i don't know when the next gas station is going to be you know it's just nice to have that peace of mind not even just on um, the road but even whenever you're off road it's nice to know hey you got that backup there the other thing that i really love about this especially coming from 300 l's and such is the wind blockage if you guys can see down there the fairings right over here just going out and again my legs are not getting beat up at all i mean even though it's gusty and yeah it's a lighter bike I, the wind's pushing around here and there when i was on the highway but at the core like i'm not getting i get beat up more by the wind on my triumph than i do on this you know it's, it's pretty darn nice now on the flip side there are a few things that i've noticed on the road in my current situation right now that i don't like and it's kind of expected, right? So, you know, as you saw earlier, I have my rally loaded down. I got my side bags topped out, that rear bag with my tent, some clothes, you know, all of my stuff back there. And then me on top of it being 180 pounds, you feel the weight. And when I say by I feel the weight, as you saw in my mod video, I lowered my rally so the 300 l's or the rallies you all know they got that soft suspension and whenever you sit on it it just kind of sags in the back and that mine's lowered you still have that but now with my luggage on the back it's even more noticeable i don't want to say i'm like you know tilted up by any means but i do feel my front wheel being a little bit lighter than i would prefer it doesn't feel like very ergonomically like balanced again kind of take that one that's not a gripe or a hate against the bike like how often will I be loading this bike down? Not much. I'll probably load down the Triumph or whatever other bike, bigger bike I have more than this. You know, I just, I just wanted to really try taking this on a longer uh, road trip and, and see how it fares. And again, so far, you know, a little bit of highway and stuff I've done, it's, gosh, it's phenomenal. But like I said, we've only been riding for 30, 45 minutes now. So let me check back in with you in a couple hours and then we'll see what my opinion is. Let me go on and do a quick update check-in here. As I've been on the road for two hours now, about an hour until my destination, and a couple of things I want to mention. First off being this carp your ride. As you see, it's off. My nerd tech guess here would be it's something to do with that box. If you can see right down there, that is a USB booster. Number two is this exhaust. Oh my gosh, it is so annoying. And when I get home, I believe I will go back to stock. Now, I got the full system for this Black Widow, so hopefully the stock one will fit right into those pipes. Again, it's just a basic slip-on. And I even have that extra silencer in this uh, Black Widow exhaust. And it's just annoying. You know, coming into a nice, quiet campground, I'm sure if you've camped before, you can appreciate it as well. But gosh, this exhaust is probably so annoying to campers. So I just went and paid for my campsite, as you can see right here. Oh, I absolutely love it. Little pad, 
some rocks, which probably aren't going to be too cozy. I just brought a little mat here so it didn't overpack. It goes down. I don't know if we can call this a stream. Really, just, I don't know, some water flow from some rain, but you guys probably can't hear it. But you can actually hear it going down right there. It's pretty cool. And the previous campers obviously didn't burn all their wood. So bonus for me, right near the bathhouse. Super cool. Now, this is like a tent site up here, which is another one over there. But it walks up from this RV spot. So I paid for the spot, even though I'm not using electricity and water. Not sure if I had to, but at least it goes to a good cause. But man, this place is super nice. Let's find a place for only you and I. It's sure as a new sunrise. And it's white as a moon is a night. It's sure as a new sunrise. Forever in your life. get all the way up in there yo that's nuts it's like the anatomy of a tree the insides oh that's crazy but look at this look at that see that tree going out there gives you 20 bucks if you make it out to the end and all the way back yo check this out it's like a little pavilion probably like boy scouts or something girl scouts little speeches ceremony type things how cool would this be to uh like start a ride right group 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 meeting before the ride just preaching out to all the riders <laughs> that'd be so cool this is like the perfect spot for a meetup for a dedicated group ride and we've got many people camping here today i think it's only me and uh, one other rider but uh wow this would be so cool just to have a whole slew of riders out here oh my gosh it is cold so the ride has begun here and this is again what i love so much about the rally Rode it on the highway, and now riding it on this kind of stuff, on and off dirt, the paved, and it just does it all great. Is it perfect? Is it the most powerful? Are you going to be jumping and popping wheelies? No, you are not. But it just does it all so good. Now, one thing I will say, and I've said it before, is the tires that I have on here, the... Um, Bridgestone Battleaxe AX41s. I love this tire. Used it on many of my big ADV bikes. But as I stated in my review or mods of the rally here, I'm not very fond of this tire on this bike. Go slow so I don't get soaked. All right. But anyways, when we get into something a little more slick, they tend to dance around a little bit. I don't understand how these trails, and people just come here and dump their trash. It's like, sheesh. Leave it on the curb for the garbage truck. Looks pretty steep. I don't know if the camera gives it justice. And now we are on the Natchez Trace. This might be a little more familiar to many is. Pretty big uh, motorcycle or just cruising type of route. Goes quite a while, I believe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it goes all the way up to Tennessee. But, uh, it can get a little dull at times because it's pretty much like what you're seeing here. Almost straight shot, low speeds, nothing really. Uh, it's just a nice road to cruise. Pretty fun if you're ever out this way just to ride down it. It's a pretty cool history along the route as well. We got a little bit of a water crossing. All right, so this is pretty deep. That wasn't too bad. The water was definitely moving a little quicker. We couldn't really see where the uh, road was. So I didn't know if it went too far right or too far left. But hey, that was pretty cool. Sure wish my carpet ride was working right now because I hate having to look down to my bag. It would be prime time if that thing 
if that screen was working right now. That's a bit of a bummer. And so far, so good. Got this cool old church right here. Let me park and I'm gonna bring you guys in to show you. Up top of the middle thing, they have a cannonball stuck in there. Not sure from which it is, but maybe I'll post something up. We'll see if it says something here, but that is a cannonball up there. I'll look here. I don't know if it says the history of the cannonball. Historic places. No. I want you used to be able to go in. No. Not now. Let's see if we can peek. Oh, it's super cool if we can get in. I don't know, it's locked. Let me dust my feet off first. I got a piano. Look at that. You can see old chandelier must have hung from up there. All these old bricks. Obviously has been touched up. Here's old chair. That's cool. And you can come up here. Yeah, see there's a thing out there to get up top. And here you can see there's the staircase, but the outside door is locked. Now it's just a bunch of supplies, I guess. But we can't get upstairs. But super cool. So awesome. Out this super old gas station. Look at this old pump here. Holy smokes. That is so cool. Some of these old roads are so cool. They're just like sitting here still. Like I could just think about when this was the main road in these old towns. I don't know. It, it just amazes me just thinking about that. What was it? What was it used to be, you know? Because I mean, this is paved. This isn't uh, dirt, so but this is a little bit better here. I don't know. Now it's going back to it. But it's crazy. I just see it's right in between. I get a little bit of... A little bit of mud here. Oh, look at this road. Apparently they didn't pave this one. This is cool, huh? Now I heard this road gets a little sketchy up here. Yeah, you gotta stay in these tracks here. That one was deep. Well, I'm in second. I thought I was in first. <laughs> no wonder I was sputtering right there. Oh, jeez. Good thing I didn't stall out in the middle of that puddle. Good thing I got this waterproof MSR gear on, because I am soaked down there below my knees from going through all these uh, puddles. That last one, I accidentally kind of gunned it through a little bit spicier than I should have. It's gonna go nice and easy through this. Oh, not bad. A little slick. Not bad. You just never know. Oh, I can watch out. All his mud's coming off his tires. Just never know how deep those are. Oh, I do not know if the camera can pick this up, but look at those ruts right there. Main thing is I don't want to slip on the leaves. That'd be the worst bit. It's slipping on the road. <laughs> Man, I wish the camera could pick this up. I can't hit the brakes too much because I'm sure the mud is slick. Oh, I like this stuff. You gotta pick a line actually. Okay, this bridge doesn't look too uh 
promising, but hey, yeah, that's so cool. That bridge, look at that old bridge right there. Super cool. Oh, and now we gotta pretty much go up that type of grade we went down. All right. There we go. Oh, geez. All right, I'm gonna stick to the right. Hopefully my back wheel follows. We'll go right there. Everything gets a little sketchy when you got a, just a sliver of road to stay on and you gotta gun it. That back tire flies out. And I don't think the camera gives the washout justice. Vicksburg campaign along this tour. Oh, so I think that's Natchez Trace if I'm thinking correctly. Owned by one family. I really don't know if many cars could get out here to see this. Now I think we're getting into the city. Okay, who's with me here? Any, you see that embankment right there? And then that handrail up top? If you used to ever skate back in your days, you look at all of these transitions through towns, totally different. Again, any of that skate could probably relate. As you can see, I have my visor up, which means I am on, I guess, the highway. I mean, this is a smaller highway here. But anyways, I'm on my way home. We finished our route somewhat. I think we cut off about an hour's worth of ride. I think everyone was just uh, kind of getting done. Uh, the time change kind of had us all jacked up a little bit. And I was fine with that because, again, I had a three-hour ride home. And I'd like to beat some of the cold you can feel the air was starting to get brisk so if i can beat some of that i'm fine it's not so much the ride it's just i don't want to be riding whenever it's uh cold out there and i know i sound like a broken record but my gosh this exhaust is going to make my ears bleed all right so i am back from my trip it is the next day here as it was too dark to film this whenever i got back i'm not sure the exact amount of mileage i did but right now the bike is saying 2323 miles hopefully i got a shot later on and i can reference the mileage up right there and i think we have two questions that i need to answer here Number one, how was my first moto camping trip since my wreck? And number two, of course, how was the rally? Did it hold up and stand up to everything I was praising it for? So covering the first question, how did I do on my first moto camping trip since my accident? I honestly did pretty good, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was in my head a little bit, you know, being away from home and being on a motorcycle again. It's not so much camping or riding a motorcycle, but what could happen away from home and you know you, you, the family and stuff like that those are the kind of things that went through my head whenever i wrecked and again kind of thinking that like oh is this worth it should i be doing this you know a day trip is a whole lot different than going out camping even though i camped only for one night but i but i did pretty good and i had a really good time that sense of adventure when you're riding out somewhere camping and then going for the ride the next day is just something i absolutely love that's why i pretty much never trailer my bike i always ride to the destination you know i've moto camped a lot in a tent tennessee georgia all, all sorts of stuff right and i used to have it down packed let me tell you what this time the sleeping bag i thought i brought was actually just a blanket right i didn't bring any sweatshirts any sweatpants or anything like that because i looked at the highs it said it was going to be around 74 or something like that oh, pff, i'm fine well, I didn't look at the lows and it was down into the low 40s and I'm down here in the south. That is pretty darn cold for us. And yes, I was pretty darn cold in that tent, but I made it through and it was perfectly fine. So on future trips, I might look into actually loading my bike into my truck and possibly taking the camper if it's something out of state, maybe a little bit further. They got a nice campground around and it's again, kind of localized type ride where you're not on a trail where you're going to different destinations each night. Maybe I will look at bringing the camper, and I think I will start dabbling with trailer my bike. But all in all, I had an absolute blast moto camping in the entire adventure. 
I really enjoy it still. So as far as question number two being how did the 300L rally fare, if you guys can hear me with the plane going over, it seems like every time I film outside, there's always a plane going over us. But question number two being how did the rally fare, it did very good. Now again, my rally is not just a stock rally. I got a lot of modifications on it. Number one being that seat concept seat. If I had the stock seat, I don't think I'd be very happy afterwards. Uh, the other thing, and one thing I probably didn't cover there as I was on highways and then we were doing off-road, keeping up with people on a lot bigger dual sports, right? Being the 300L rally being underpowered or the 300Ls just in general being underpowered. And as you know, I am not an aggressive rider. I don't care for jumping. I don't care for wheelies. I just like riding, exploring, and getting out on an adventure, right? I'm fine being the guy in the middle or the guy in the back. I don't have to be the guy in the front, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not aggressive whatsoever. And it did everything I wanted. Now, there were times when I'm, again, on those smaller highways and the bike is just constantly pinned out. It's happy at 70 miles an hour. That's right where it stays. The light won't be flashing unless you ECU'd it and all that kind of stuff. But right at 70 miles per hour, it is perfectly fine. Anything above that, the light starts flashing. But you can roll 75 on this and be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, I've got it up to 80 on this trip, you know what I mean? But again, that 70 is that sweet spot. And as far as the off-road riding, it was great. Again, it handled everything. Do I wish I had different tires? Sure, but it still held up to it. I love how I lowered it and I can walk through any situation. So any obstacle I saw coming up, I'm like, ah, I don't really gotta worry about it because I can just walk the bike over if need be. Now also, as you saw in the video, we did have issues with the Carpy right here. I absolutely love this device, but I'm really bummed out that it went out on me. Um, as you saw in the video, we had it hooked up this kind of way, which I think is probably the fault here, especially with that USB booster there. So I'm gonna try again, mounting a dedicated USB port, like I stated, and if that doesn't work, I'll try routing for the battery. Uh, I'm giving Carpy Ride the benefit of the doubt here, but I will do a follow-up video or pin a comment down below letting you know what solution worked. If you guys want a follow-up video, let me know and, and we'll cover that. I just don't know if it'll justify a full video, maybe just a pinned comment down there. But hopefully I can get it working, but if not, I will let you all know. So I know I really didn't answer the core question of is it the perfect bike? I think it's that bike that's right there that's gonna do everything anybody really needs. It's not gonna do anything great, but it is going to do it. And that's what makes the bike so good, in my opinion. But thank you so much for coming along for this adventure. I had a blast, I hope you did. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to catch you in the next adventure. Bye now.